My name is Mary Hank. I am in far western Kentucky in McCracken County, and I am the horticulture agent here in McCracken County. And today I will be presenting on goldenrods. And as Sharon said, I have been watching this program for a couple of years, and I am very excited that I get to present for you guys today. So first we're gonna talk about what is a goldenrod? A uh, goldenrod is a plant of the genus Solidago, which means to make whole. It is a perennial plant, which is what I always try to look for when shopping for plants. That means it comes back year after year, and it is in the aster family. They grow best in full sun, and soil must be dry to medium and well-drained. This kind of Fun fact surprised me, golden rods have more than 150 species. And let's see, they are a species of the wildflower that is often considered a weed, but they are not. And here they are beneficial to your garden. They prefer acidic and neutral soil pH. And their hardiness zones are 2A through 8B, so they have a very wide range. And they are a native plant, which is another very good characteristic to look for. And just another fact, um, the hardiness zone in Paducah, Kentucky is 7A. And this is a great map. I'm sure a lot of you gardeners have looked at before to see what grows best in your area. This is the USDA hardiness zone map. Here. Uh, to help maintain your golden rods, you want to water them weekly and they want to remain damp but not soggy because they will become waterlogged. Mature golden rod plants are drought tolerant and rarely need supplemental watering. Fertilizer is usually not required, but the soil quality is poor. You can add compost in the spring. And pruning stem tips early in the spring can help plants become fuller and bushier. This is great for your pollinators. Overwintering, the goldenrod is a hardy plant to our area and does not need protection unless grown in containers. In the garden, if you choose to grow your species there, the stems can be cut down to a few inches above ground level but wait until after the frost kills the foliage. Some more characteristics of your golden rods. They are autumn flowers that grow in the meadows, woods, and rocky ground, and the hills of the United States. There are five different types and more than 30 different varieties of golden rods as we touched on. And they are most common in Kentucky is the tall golden rod. That is the one you will see most commonly. And when looking for them, you will look between July and October. So right now you should start seeing your golden rods. And I get asked this question before, are they good for pollinators? And of course, every horticulture agent loves to say yes. They make great plants to attract butterflies and pollinators to your home garden. The numerous small flowers at golden rods are filled with nectar and pollen. And since they bloom in late summer, they are a very important source for bees and butterflies and other pollinators. Since a lot of your flowers will bloom in the spring, um, the flavor is medium sweetness with hints of licorice and butterscotch if you choose to take a bite of your goldenrod. So the cultural significance of the state flower, which is the goldenrod, it has been a long symbol of excitement and optimism in poetry and art. In many cultures, it is a sign of good fortune. And I read that it was native to China, some different species, and they can become powerful symbols of riches and good fortunes because of their vibrant hue. And goldenrod is thought to flourish where treasure is hidden. So lots of good aspects of this. Some different uses of goldenrod, which I thought these were pretty neat. The leaves of some varieties of the goldenrod are used to make herbal tea to reduce fevers and treat infections. So they have other uses besides just looking pretty and for pollinators. 
They can help with seasonal allergies or clogged sinuses, which kind of can become a surprise to some people because people think goldenrods cause allergies, but they actually help with your allergies. Goldenrods contain polyenthylos, which are plant-based chemicals that often act as antioxidants. Some different pests and diseases of goldenrods, which your horticulture and agriculture agents can help you identify these. Um, this plant has no serious insect or disease problems, which is also a great thing to hear. However, rust and powdery mildew, which is the two at the bottom, and leaf spot can occur. So those are some different things you need to watch out for when having your golden rods. So now um, we're going to see it from the audience. If you know which is a goldenrod or a ragweed, and you can type these in the chat if you would like, and or if you just wanna silently write them down to yourself. But let's see, the first one is this picture. Do you think this is a goldenrod or a ragweed? I think it's a goldenrod. And you can also unmute yourself and answer if you'd like. All right, so this one is a goldenrod. Our next one is this one. Goldenrod. Yes, ma'am, this one is a golden rod as well. Oh, I just decided to go off. And we got this one is next. This is a golden rod as well. And this is our fourth one. Ragweed. Yep, that one is a ragweed. You can tell by the leaves and it's not a vibrant yellow hue. And our last one. This one's trickier. This one is a goldenrod as well. Again, you can tell by the leaves on this plant. So just some different pictures to show you um, the characteristics of the goldenrod. I always learn better by picture, so I want to include those as well. So here's some side-by-side -side pictures. You can see the ragweed and the goldenrod, how the ragweed is kind of a more greenish color and the goldenrod is more beautiful, vibrant yellows. And the ragweed is the culprit of your allergies, which people always think the goldenrod is, but goldenrod is not. Ragweed also doesn't grow very tall, while goldenrod can reach up to five feet tall, so they get pretty high up there. And again, goldenrods are a bright, beautiful yellow hue, while ragweeds are kind of more of a green to yellow, and they also appear in smaller formations too. So the history of the state flower, the trumpet vine was official state flower Kentucky in 1921, which is another beautiful flower. And the Kentucky Women's Club began promoting the goldenrod as the appropriate floral emblem. And on May 16th, 1926, the goldenrod was officially adopted as the state flower. So goldenrod in Kentucky, again, as you can see on the right hand side of your screen, just beautiful, vibrant colors. Um, the, of the yellow color is just beautiful. And residents of the bluegrass state have a long history of appreciating the Kentucky state flower. And the flower also actually appears on the Kentucky or the state flag encircling the Kentucky state seal. As you can see along kind of the bottom on there, you see that beautiful goldenrod color. And I just have my sources on here as well. 
But that is the end of my presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions about golden rods, I'm more than happy to answer anything.